Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of an explanation of some of the settings that are in these tests or quizzes that we are creating. So let me look at one of the tests or quizzes. All right, so these are the standard um, activity that comes up. You can add attachments. What it does is put a little link right on kind of like the landing page of the quiz and students actually have to click on it so it's a little bit of not as user friendly as I would like um, but you can put an attachment there that students can click on and use during a test. You also have the ability to give them a calculator. You can either do it here or you can do it for individual questions. You can also add companion material here that's usually a resource that's already loaded into the course. And you can also leave some instructor notes here. This, very similar to the attachment, puts a link right when the student kind of clicks on the test, but they have to click on the pencil in order to see it. So it doesn't pop up like a landing page. So it's, again, not quite as user friendly as I would like, but it's there. And you can teach the students to click on that either the paperclip symbol for an attachment or the pencil symbol to see any notes you put down in here. All right, so that's the activity tab. The second tab is questions. Again, you can click on each of these questions. If you have some Zia questions in your class, they will be loaded here for you. You can see the type of question it is, multiple choice. You can do essay, fill in the blanks, matching, multiple answer, multiple choice, ordering, or an actual passage, which would be a paragraph that has questions attached to it. You can, most of the time, cut and paste images right into here. You can also do uploading of images, which is, I think, a little more tedious, but you can definitely do it. So play with those. But I wanted to look at the properties that are over here on the side. So you can do labels for any multiple choice question. Like Zia entered labels for me already of A, B, C, D here, and then down at the bottom they have to choose. Um, over here you can also give labels like this. You can see them popping up over here. Lowercase a, um, Roman numerals, up to you. You can maintain the response order, which means the answer choices always come up in the same order. You can show it as a drop down instead of just a listing here. It could be a drop down that they click. Um, you can also do displaying workspace, which gives a little bit of a box at the bottom, I believe, that they can enter some information in. Question groups here. Let's say you wanted to um, give some questions like a grouping. Like I know one of mine in my consumer math class when I was planning it, they all fall under the same standard, but they're a little bit different questions. And I wanted to be able to create a poll where the students got all the same kind of questions, like all of the same um, discount questions and rate of change, those kind of things that fall under the same standard, but they're a little bit different. You can actually give it a question right here, a grouping like rate of change, and then use some features, some polling features later to pull out a certain number of these rate of change questions or, you know, questions like that. I'm not real sure what this question definition does. Um, standards. This kind of goes with this tab up here. In this standards tab, this current one that I'm doing is rotations. So I have all of these loaded here for me if I find the rotation one. Uh, let's see here. Let's go with deletion coordinates slope. All right, I thought these were up towards the top, but they're right there. There we go. Given a geometric figure and a rotation reflection, there's my standard. So if I choose this on the standard tab and I go back to the questions, and look at my question here. It will automatically give me that standard, <coughs> that parent standard that I chose. So I could choose that. Or if I wanted to, I could come out here to course and see all of the standards for the course that I chose, as well as any kind of selected one that I've already chosen. Points. 
You can do points here. I'll show you in a minute where the default number of points are, but you can change it to a certain number of points. You could give partial credit or extra credit. Um, variables I haven't played around with too much. Calculator. Remember on the main activity page, you could choose a calculator here for the whole test. Or if you do it by question here, you can choose a specific calculator for each question. Say you want them to have a scientific calculator on a specific question, but all of the other ones have just a basic calculator. You could do that. And again, you can add some companion material. Data, you could put a picture in here if you wanted to for all of your tests. Again, standards, that's where we chose the standard, the parent standard for this test. Gradebook. One of the things I noticed for this grade is because I put my first category in as summative, all of my graded assignments now come up as summative by default. So you may need to change that to formative. Formative for quizzes, summative for the tests. Weighting in a category, I would keep as 100% for right now. Score entry, I would probably keep as points, because those are, if you're in the grade book and you're using that quick entry, what would you be putting in there? Most of the time you can keep it as points, but if you're going to be entering percentages, you could put percentages. If you're using a rubric, you could do rubric or even letter grade. And these, I don't play with too much the grading scale points and passing score. We don't usually do those. Minimum points possible, I wouldn't really mess with that one. Um, I would just make sure you have this include in final grade here. The other ones I wouldn't worry too much about. Um, treat unscored as zero. That means once the due date is passed, it will automatically put in a zero for you. Some people like that. I kind of like putting in my own zeros since I know we have a lot of new kids starting. I want to be able to make sure I exempt those before I do that. The other setting here is the due date. You can either set up a due date here or once an activity is visible, you can do it using the scheduling. So due date and you want to make sure you allow those late submissions. Notice you can put in here the late rule. You can always allow them or you can do some kind of grace period. I know a few people were using those grace periods to come up with our quarter due dates, figuring out how far from the due date so that it automatically shuts on the grace period, which is October 28th. I usually just allow my allow, allow late submissions and then whenever it's time, I can go through and close them using the gradebook settings. All right, navigation. Again, you can put these. Notice it's visible in my table of comments, contents. Right now it's not visible to students because I'm still editing this quiz. You can assign a badge if you want to once the student completes it. Completion, these are these check marks over on the side. You can mark it complete when the student submits this activity or even views the activity for a specific time or achieves a passing score on the activity. Up to you. Here is where that gate is. The student must complete before continuing on to the next one. And these advanced, I don't play with those at all, so I wouldn't worry too much about them. Assessment settings. You can choose how many times they want to retake it. You can allow them to save and continue. If you uncheck it, they have to complete it in one sitting. You can require answers for all questions. You can do questions per page. Do you want them all to show up or one at a time? Do you want them to have randomized question order or randomized response order? Here's some review settings. Steve is going to create a video that goes more over and shows you exactly what each of these review settings do. Down here in pool, here is where you can actually create a pool of questions. You can put down the number of questions you want the students to receive. You could do it by group, by learning objective, or by question type. And this by group here, if you remember I talked about putting in a group with all my questions, rate of change, discount, those kind of things. I could actually put this in here and put in rate and I want them to have at least one question from that rate grouping. So you can do that here. All right, and finally the advanced, should you want to, there's the time limits here. 
You can allow them to print, hide a back button so they can't go back to previous questions. You can have show question review flags, which might be a good one for students so they can um, flag a question that they want to come back to. Here is that default question score. If you don't put in a point value back on the question tab, it'll automatically give it this point value. The formative and this remediation, I'm not real sure about that one, so that one we're going to have to get um, Buzz to give us some more info on what that is. Attempt minimum, it's how many attempts before the grade goes into the gradebook. I would probably keep this at a 1. Scored attempt, I would definitely change that to highest. That's what's going to go into the gradebook, the highest score they get on the attempts. Start assessment automatically, I would probably keep that unchecked so that it still gives students that landing page and gives them a chance to decide not to take the quiz before they start it. And then exam templates and passwords I wouldn't worry too much about. And lastly there is history here. In case you wanted to go back and see previous versions of how you've changed these quizzes before, um, so you can see what the previous quizzes look like and what changes you made. All right, hopefully that helps. In a future video, I'm going to go over some of these group settings down here. And again, Steve will go over the review settings here in another video.